the future of visual wearables from a doctor of optometry. I'm Tanya Hall and joining me is Dr. Brian Wolf, optometrist and owner of Wolf Eye Lab of Baltimore, Maryland. Welcome Dr. Wolf. Thank you. Optometry, that's your in your blood. Tell us about your family's story in the field and how you got started in, in being uh, in optometry. So uh, I am actually the first third generation optometrist in Maryland. And my grandmother was the first female optometrist to practice in Maryland. So my grandfather, grandmother, father, and then of course myself are all optometrists. So three generations of eye care, it kind of runs in the blood. I might have taken a little side trip to uh, engineering, but I wised up and got back in line. You recently uh, had the opportunity to demo the Microsoft's brand new HoloLens too. What was that like? Yeah, I have had a chance to use a couple of the augmented reality devices such as Magic Leap and the others. I, and it was really exciting to get a chance to, to get my hands on this. It is definitely an evolution of the trend. Uh, when I've tried the any augmented reality device, it is obvious that this is the future. This is clearly the next thing that's coming. Um, smartphones are sort of phasing out, the, the purchase rates are going down and whatnot. It's sort of the beginning of the end of smartphones. Uh, and now it's clear that the next thing that's going to be coming is these augmented reality glasses where the information is projected over your reality uh, and you're able to have that interaction. The HoloLens is the next step in that evolution. It is a much more comfortable headset to wear uh, and they've worked on making it fit people like myself who wear glasses uh, much, much better. Not to mention the battery pack and technology are all stored in the headset. There's nothing clipped on your belt or no wires. It's a completely wireless experience. It's clearly not quite ready for commercial grade. The battery life isn't fantastic, but there's just no question. The next thing we will all own is some form of augmented reality glasses once they can just package it smaller and smaller. You and I have talked about this before, but if you already wear glasses or contacts, what should you look for in smart glasses or VR headsets? So with smart glasses, the glasses themselves are the device. So there's not too much there except making sure, of course, it fits comfortably on your uh, head. And that can usually be adjusted by a, an optometrist or, or anyone who has some optical experience. With a VR headset, uh, you really do need to try it on with your glasses. Uh, some of them just do not accommodate a normal size frame well. Uh, depending on how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go, we actually sell glasses specifically designed for motorcycle helmets and sporting equipment, which actually fit quite well inside some of the smaller VR headsets. Uh, but it depends if you want to get a special pair of glasses to go with your headset or not. Are smart contacts in our future anytime soon? I definitely think they're in our future. I don't think anytime soon. Uh, they're working on ways to power them off of body heat and off of some other chemistry things, but the ultimate problem is it just the technology's not there yet. I think we'll start to see some sort of sensors coming out where some sort of basic electrical current is conducted by maybe the blood sugar in the tear film or something like that, and you could relate that to some sort of diabetic checking or whatnot, but I think the kind of sort of science fiction, put the contact lens in, there's your augmented reality is probably quite a while away just from a technology standard. What are some concerns that maybe the industry has from your point of view that should be taken into consideration when we're talking about creating these sorts of advices? Well, the industry has moved from a yearly contact lens, well, you basically get one pair once a year, to then quarterly to biweekly, and now the majority of contacts that I fit are daily wear disposables. So essentially you're putting a brand new, fresh, clean, sterile lens in in the morning and throwing it out at night. And this has eliminated a lot of the problems that contact lenses have as far as basically putting a piece of plastic on your eye for you know 24 hours. It's not the greatest thing to do to your cornea. That being said, the one day throwaways are really new to the market and it's because of the manufacturing process has allowed them to be made quickly enough that they're cheap enough to be worn daily. With a technological contact lens, we're going back now to get one pair of contact lenses. So all the same problems run up. How do you disinfect it? How do you keep it clean? How do you, you know, not damage it, scratch it or, or wear it out? So I think it's going to be a while before we're in contact lenses that are more than just a specialty item for a particular uh, job. 
What kind of things should people in your line of work and certainly people that monitor eyes and health sh- should be aware of as they're consulting with maybe their their clients, their their patients, and maybe as they're marketing their services? I mean, are there any liabilities or any things that they should be worried about? I'm not sure so much about liabilities, but there's no question that the optometrist needs to look beyond their normal scope of care. Uh, all these changes that are coming, the augmented reality glasses, the, the different kinds of screen use, the different whatnot, are all coming outside of our normal field of just general eye health, making sure you don't have diseases, making sure you're healthy. So I think anyone in the eye care industry who wants to sort of work in this field really needs to look much farther beyond their normal scope of practice into, you know, what is coming out of Microsoft and Google and Amazon? What are the new devices that are on the thing, on the, uh, on the horizon? So I think that would be the biggest thing is just to really expand your scope dramatically outside of the normal regular healthcare field and into more of the technology space and what's coming up in the future. Dr. Brian Wolf, optometrist and owner of Wolf Eye Lab in Baltimore, Maryland. If somebody has maybe questions about, maybe they're an optom- optometrist who's getting hit with a lot of questions about this, or maybe they're uh, you know, a patient who's just interested in finding out more information about this type of technology for themselves, how can they go about doing that? The best way to get in contact with us is going through our website, wolfeyelab.com. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think the local optometric as- societies, the American Optometric Association, uh, or your local uh, state association of optometrists is a great place to find resources on many things, including general eye health and, and care of your eyes. Thanks again, Brian. And find more of my interviews right here or go to tanyahall.net. Thanks for watching. Thank you.